Uh, let me introduce the guys and tell you what they're going to talk about briefly. We have Will Hudson. He's the founder of several uh, digital, uh, digital uh, media agencies, I guess. Serial entrepreneur. Uh, Luis Lipos, co-founder of Namshi. Now he is the co-founder of Astro Labs. And they go around the region teaching uh, scaling online startups and you know, best practices for building an online startup. And what they're going to talk about today for the next hour, hour and a half, is building and scaling an online startup. Yeah. So without further ado, we'll end the news. Thanks. Cool. Um, so Rala and Faris kind of insisted that we have a bunch of uh, slides. Um, we do have a lot of content up here, but um, both Widow and I are actually more comfortable when it's you know, audience uh, driven. Um, so um, please ask away at any point. Stuff, there's a bunch of stuff that we'll probably rush uh, through. Um, yep. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that we'll probably rush through because, uh, you know, um, my sense right now post attending you know, the whole day is the majority of people here are either in a startup or, you know, just started one or, uh, you know, this type of stuff. So there's no normal audience of pre-startup uh, people, right? Anyone here not in a startup uh, or, you know, not in a... Okay. You're considering starting a startup. Okay, so okay. a few, few, uh, few people. We, we, have, we had a, few, so a very small section about that. We'll blast through it. And then once we, got, we get to the meet, you know, stop us. I'll, I'll make a longer intro to uh, Will. Will actually started, you know, the social media team at Disney uh, when Disney was getting on, on social media. And now actually Limited does, you know, major, major social media work for companies like Etihad, Abu Dhabi, tourism authorities, and other, you know, big clients. And um, besides that work, they do actually a lot of, you know, startup incubation, this type of things. Will uh, works, uh, you know, uh, well, joins Dash Labs uh, SOS uh, weekends, which are three-day intensive weekends focused on the scaling phase in the startup. Uh, just, you know, stuff that is useful, uh, you know, digital marketing, conversion optimization, stuff that is actionable. Uh, Will, uh, thankfully, you know, comes uh, to the SOS uh, uh, weekends and he's here today also because of all his experience there. So, and we'll do this together. Uh, yeah. yeah. Should be pretty fun. Yeah. Um, how do we want to kick off? Um, so, um, because, you know, um, <laughs> it is the best time to start a startup. Uh, well, at the end, we'll also talk about all the, you know, cloud and SaaS options and all the other tools that are, you know, becoming available for entrepreneurs to make starting a startup, you know, much, much easier than it used to be, you know, f just a few years ago. Um, talent, as we were today, is super hard to find, but it is now much, much easier, you know, thanks by effort to efforts by Wanda and other people in the ecosystem. Talent is becoming more interested in startups. So, so when you talk to people and, you know, Universities, people have this interest. You know, are they converting to joining startups? Uh, maybe not always, but there's much, much more interest, much more openness to starting startups. But that, that makes it also, you know, easier. There's a lot of new distribution channels, you know, app stores, all the stuff, new business models that are, you know, opening up the way for smaller startups in small countries like Lebanon, like the UAE, to become, you know, regional and global players. Uh, and last thing is, actually, you know, this is a waterfall of money. It never feels like it, but, you know, there is actually much more, uh, compared to, I'm comparing this to, you know, four or five years ago, there's way, way more interest from investors to invest in technology startups in the region. And you'll hear about, you know, you heard about the central bank thing in Lebanon. There's a lot, lot more money coming online in the GCC, big funds, all this stuff. So there's, you know, it's a, it's a good time to, uh, to start a startup. Uh, but it's still incredibly hard, uh, you know, there's, if, if you Google uh, how to start a startup, <laughs> you'll, you'll find a bunch of things uh, and just keep going through them. This is just from a few weeks ago. This is Ali Habib, the co-founder of Anghani. The, the guys were here today. Uh, he tweeted this, uh, uh, starts our way freaking <laughs> harder than <laughs> anything you ever do. It's, it, and and um, Eddie today was just, uh, you know, saying something to me where this is expressing his um, concern that people think it's easier than it is, right? It's incredibly hard. Um, it's just easier than it used to be, right? Uh, so uh, I think no one is fooled. The, the good thing is, you know, two months into a startup, everyone 
learns that it's very hard, and then uh, you just keep learning that uh, going forward. So that was basically just um, just on that. But this will, will also, you know, just cover very very quickly. I mean, uh, love to have Will's uh, sure. input on this. But basically, you know, a lot of the questions today were, okay, you know, have an idea, have uh, this type of stuff. What can I, uh, you know, how can I approach it? And these are just some, you know, perspectives on, you know, what I, if right now after starting. Uh, a business and a half, I've helped uh, another business start, you know, how I would look at it, you know, is this, is this uh, problem hard enough, is this, you know, pain, big enough pain for uh, customers, is there, you know, are, are people willing to uh, pay for it, right. and I think specifically in the region, I don't know your perspective, but, you know, specifically in the region, you have to start thinking monetization first, don't think about, you know, starting something for, for a exit, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, ways and uh, Instagram and this type of stuff. And the opportunity, you know, do, are, is, is there enough number of people to pay for it? I think one of the big things, if you look at the first section in yeah. terms of like addressing the problem, we can look at market size and that will help qualify monetization and the opportunity. But if you actually look at the problem that you're setting out to solve, a lot of the startups that we've met with today have really neat features. And, it'll, and that's okay to start around one really big feature as long as that feature solves a really uh, sustainable and large enough problem. Um, what you don't want to do is be in a position where you have a really cool app that has a couple nice bells and whistles, and then you have to reverse engineer a problem or try to find a market to be able to take over or, or, or build relevance in. So fundamental to this, I think, is finding and addressing the problem and making sure that you're vetting it with like actual colleagues and, and, and other stakeholders that are saying, yeah, I have that problem, I need this, I will pay for it, and then making sure you see that through. To your point in terms of monetization, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, selling a product. It could be building out that marketplace. It could be connecting the dots, whether it's lead generation. Um, and that's obviously going to tri uh, trickle through into how you acquire them, how you target them, and, and how you scale your data around that. Um, you want to talk about the team? Uh, yeah, so, so I mean, also today we heard a lot about, you know, okay, how do I get the co-founder and all this stuff. This is one by far of the most important things uh, that you do at the beginning. Uh, I mean, a co-founder is a critical, critical element and a mistake in either way. Uh, a mistake not getting one when you actually need one uh, for your business uh, or, you know, saying, okay, you know, I don't need a CTO, co-founder, I'll just outsource technology because it's not important to me, it could be crucial to you uh, later or uh, a mistake of doing, you know, just choosing one because this person seems to be interested enough and you know, he seems to be you know, really, or she of course, uh, she seems to be really interested in the business but then eventually you, know, you're, uh, you don't match uh, in terms of you know, business uh, skills, in terms of your uh, types and all this stuff. So this is one of the critical ones. Definitely. Just, uh, just a quick uh, note here, I actually put a couple of links on the problem, I hope everyone reads the Paul Graham's um, blog or the notes that he puts up. Uh, don't, you know. Uh, Paul I mean, Graham's the founder of uh, Y Combinator and yeah. he's written some really startling and really kind of transparent essays on startup culture. Exactly. So, so he, he's an entrepreneur and has the, you know, started the most successful incubator in the world, Y Combinator. And he writes these really interesting uh, notes. And the one about startup ideas is really interesting about you know, starting with the problem first and how to think about it and all this stuff. The other point is, you know, the Udacity course on, you know, the lean business model. This, this, we're not going to cover anything regarding lean, you know, in this uh, session here. I am really interested in it. But there's so much uh, resources. One that also, you know, sometimes yeah. does lean uh, business model uh, workshops. workshops. Uh, the Udacity course, it's by Steve Blank, basically the founder of uh, the lean startup, is highly, highly recommended. I took it, uh, you know, after I started companies and I learned a lot from it. I highly recommend that you can take it online for free. Uh, but that's it. Uh, so this is just the only portion that we have on starting a business. Uh, going forward, everything is about scaling. Um, I mentioned in our um, intro that you know, we, we do scaling workshops. And we do these three-day workshops with 10 companies at a time. And before every workshop, there's you know, a pre-workshop survey that goes to all 20 or so founders. And in every program, uh, we basically, you know, uh, see what, what the commonality is. Mm. These are basically the common challenges that every single entrepreneur in the Middle East uh, does. We've done maybe uh, 100 entrepreneurs, about 50 companies uh, so far. And every single one is basically thinking, okay, how do I 
uh, acquire customers. You know, how do I spend my uh, money? How do I spend my marketing budget in the most efficient way and get more uh, customers? Uh, there is, of course, you know, uh, logistical stuff uh, for the ones that are e-commerce, operational. How do I run my company? How do I motivate a team? All the stuff. Payments. Uh, payments for a lot of uh, people in Jordan and Saudi, it's very hard to get payments online. So payments is a, you know, uh, a big deal. This just goes to show that you know, across the region, the, sa the same, same challenges come again and again. And you know, they're, they're tough ones, but they're not impossible to uh, change. And this is basically what, what uh, we, we try to focus on when we're working with some founders on uh, helping them scale. Absolutely. But this is just a little bit of background. Um, yeah, so um, tons, tons, you know, the, the, the method that we usually uh, use is there's too many things to focus on. You know, there's 100,000 uh, things that you're trying to uh, focus on in a startup. It's impossible to optimize on all of them. Just pick a couple that you're able to really, really focus on. The two most important, you know, core metrics that uh, you have, whatever KPIs, whatever you want to call them, and try to optimize your business around them. Of course, there's other metrics to uh, keep an eye on, but there's you know, ones that are actually in your brain the whole time. And the ones we teach are customer acquisition costs and customer lifetime value, uh, and always with a big warning. Off of each of these, there are tons of different um, actions, and there's uh, a lot of different channels that you can track and measure and qualify uh, how to acquire a customer or what that customer is worth. It's your job as an entrepreneur to create a framework or an environment where you can value these. And what does that mean? So for customer acquisition, that might be what the, the total market is. It might be uh, what your customer or what your, what your uh, competitors are pricing at. It might be um, the number of new customers you need to, uh, to convert on a certain uh, you know, uh, shopping cart price. Uh, there could be a lot of different factors. It could be just as simple as installing your app. It could be installing your app and then inviting 10 friends, and that's your, your, your most desired customer. So if you put the right framework in place, it's going to unlock a lot of different ways for you to target and make sure you're, you're heading in the right direction. On the back of that, you need to build a lifetime value. Yeah. Um, exactly. So, and lifetime value, what goes into it is not, you know, uh, is everything that your uh, company does, right? So, you know, um, if I'm InstaBeat, for example, uh, <laughs> just because I see it uh, here, you know, if I'm Insta InstaBeat, I'm thinking, okay, you know, I'm, uh, this is what it costs me to get one person to buy, you know, the goggles. But how am I going to, you know, monetize it in the future? You know, are, are they going to upgrade? How often? This type of stuff. Um, and, you know, if, if they really like the product and all this stuff, how often would they replace it? And what's, you know, my eventual customer lifetime value? This is, you know, this, this becomes more, um, I guess, data intensive when you have, you know, a very high running business. You know, if you're a mobile game or e-commerce company and you have, you know, way more transactions selling multiple times in it, you get a much better view of what a customer is worth for you than just that one transaction that they did at the beginning. I think it's important to say, though, um, a lot of times when we'll start to dig into acquisition costs or lifetime value, a lot of entrepreneurs will raise their hand and say, I'm, I'm not there yet. That's, it's too early on. I'm still doing things that don't scale. That's really frustrating because the best time to start measuring is when you're not scaling and when you're doing things that are more labor intensive or they're a little bit more manual. Because if you're measuring your acquisition costs or your lifetime value of your customers when you're doing the manual parts, you're going to start to realize really good gains as you start to bring more efficiencies in on acquiring customers and, and, and obviously figuring out who your, your optimal customer is. Be, be uh, I have a point here, but before I, we go further, I'm actually uncomfortably uh, worried about, you know, the silence. So uh, please, if, you know, a thought uh, comes through your mind about, okay, how does this apply to my business, right? This sounds too academic. This sounds theoretical. Th th this is definitely not theoretical or academic, right? Uh, this is what we think is super, super useful for any business, right? Um, so, uh, can, can, can we please, uh, can, can I ask a request to like more interruptions? Uh, you know, how does this apply? What is it exactly? This type of stuff. We are going to go through some of this stuff a little bit more in detail, but better say, okay, we're going to go uh, through it than, you know, just hearing, you know, silence and thinking people are, think this is, you know, academic stuff. Um, cool. 
On, on, on Will's point, it's, it's never too early, right? If, if I'm selling a business model and if I'm telling, you know, a um, investor, you know, invest in my business, it's very, very important to say, okay, you know, I, uh, I, I get one person, you know, on a tariff, but between the collection of all the stuff, the upgrades and, uh, you know, the requests for introductions and all the stuff, over, you know, a two-year lifetime, I expect, you know, a typical customer to come uh, on a tariff to spend, let's say, $50, right? And I can acquire a customer, you know, post-download and then conversion to, you know, a paid uh, for $5, right? And then you have $5 that you're investing in acquiring customer, right, to, to, to be a paying customer on tariff, and then you have $50 and you say, okay, uh, I'm an investor, I'm interested in th this business, right? So none of it is academic. It's just a way to look, to look at your business that is not big Excel. I mean, the, the business plan, everyone knows, is, uh, you know, a useful uh, way to see, okay, how things are going to run through. But you get lost and deep in Excel and you start losing the big focus. You step back and you say, okay, it's going to take me $5 to get someone on a paragraph. I can get $50 out of them in, in you know, a two-year uh, lifetime. Uh, or you start doing the dreaming. You, you know, you, you've been there, you've been in the Excel sheet, and you're like, yeah, but if I acquired three more customers a day, and they only spent two more dollars in my shopping cart, that's like $3 million. Yeah. That's it. I just need, that's, no, that's doable. I can do that. That's great. That's great when you're putting together a valuation, you're trying to dream, or you're trying to say where your company wants to go, but you'll get lost in those weeds unless you have some really objective data to kind of help bring you out of that. I know it's cliche to say, but as an entrepreneur, the worst person to lie to is yourself. Mm -hmm. So these are the metrics that can help you, you know, pull, pull you out of those weeds when you're not making sense of, you know, are we having a good month or are we having a bad month? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. is, uh, is this effective or not? And one, one last quick point. <laughs> Before, um, you know, uh, you're, you're uh, what? Um, so not just in planning, you're running a business, it's generating money, all the stuff. If you are able to focus, uh, you know, if, if you have a uh, site and you're, you know, you're able to focus on reducing this customer acquisition, you say, okay, uh, I'm going to focus on reducing customer acquisition and increasing my customer lifetime value, then, you know, you, you have a good way to focus your energy, right? Because tons of challenges, you saw all of that, and usually you start your day, and even if you're, you know, the, the crazy get things done uh, person, you're still going to be lost by the amount of stuff that comes to you as an entrepreneur. And this is one of the key things in entrepreneurship. It's prioritization is one of the biggest challenges by far. Not payments, not logistics, not funding. Prioritization, I think, is uh, one of the biggest ones. So, so using those two things and optimizing for them, and big warning, cash flow, uh, yeah. but we'll talk about that on site. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I agree that it's great when we have these metrics and the, the way that you are quoting them is really useful. The problem is that when you are an entrepreneur, you are, you are doing your business plan, you are prospecting mm -hmm. for something that you don't know yet. Yep. You have, you have metrics, but you have done it as an academic. Uh, I mean, if you are growing your business outside the country, in my case, I don't yeah. know yet how to find Sorry, which one is your company? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just spoke, yeah. <laughs> but I thought you'd talk about someone else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to find value as a seller when I'm doing my business plan. Mm -hmm. I'm supposing that I will find, I don't know, if I have three years in one. Yeah. Exactly. So, so if this if is supposed to take the theory out of it. Yeah. So, if you're actually looking at kind of the factors, and we're going to dive deeper into this at some point. But the goal is to start to quantify and start to kind of piece together how you get the outcomes that you're getting. So there's no mystery to it. So you're actually able to see these channels are working to acquire these customers and these customers are worth this because they visit me every month and they, they last you know, 18 months before they drop off or I don't have to really remarket them or I've got a defensible position on these customers. Um, uh, you know, so all of those things, the goal of, of kind of doing the customer acquisition and lifetime value exercise is to try to remove that. So your business plan is great for business planning and, and, and to raise and to kind of, uh, I don't want to say blue sky because it's got a bad uh, connotation, but um, you know, just really kind of paint the picture of what the business could be. But this is a really great way for you to kind of ground your business in fundamentals. So the goal would be to take some of your assumptions and put them in here and then be honest if it's not performing.
and find out what is performing, more importantly. Yeah, because, I mean, at some point it is looking forward, but then two weeks later, you've just tested that assumption, and you can prove if that customer acquisition that you assumed uh, was, you know, bullshit or not. Uh, and that's, that's the idea, basically. Uh, cool. Um, we, were, we were officially requested by Juan that you put more analytic stuff in this, so we tried to beef it up. Prepare to get analytical. Yeah, exactly. Um, so so here, here's the thing, uh, right? Um, there is one, we put some of the key metrics that you as you know, a company, this is just four types of business models, right? E-commerce, platforms and uh, marketplaces, SaaS, and mobile apps. Who uses Google Analytics? Yeah? yeah? And within that instance of Google Analytics, have you done any sort of custom audiences or targeting or any sort of conversion tracking? Anybody? A few of you? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, no thanks for the setback. But basically, you know, um, we first uh, the, we put some of the key metrics, um, and the idea is. And some of the known industries, there is, you know, core metrics that everyone knows. Of course, all the time when you're starting, you know, you're putting an analytics platform in place, you start by asking the questions, what am I trying to find out before you dive in into any analytics platform? There's too many things in Google Analytics. Uh, there is, uh, you know, reports like this thing on the right, which is the customer flow report. Don't even look at it, you know. There, there's this real-time report, uh, real-time, you know, how many people on the site. Waste your time if you look at it and you say 100 people and then you just 120 and this, uh, you know, X from this country, X from that country. You know, it's, it's uh, just jumping into analytics uh, platform. It's just uh, a waste of time if you don't know exactly what uh, you want to get out of it. Definitely. Um, so um, one of the, you know, more structured ways to do it is just, one, try to see what the questions are, but two, start saying, okay, I want to analyze my conversion uh, funnel. And you set up actually a, a, a conversion funnel, which we'll talk uh, about in a, in a second. You can set up event tracking. We'll also talk about it in a, uh, in a, um, in a second. And e-commerce tracking, right? So, so uh, e-commerce tracking is technically not just for e-commerce. If you're doing any kind of financial transaction on the site, you can set up e-commerce tracking to get back into you know, analytics, all the financial data, what, would, what did the person you know, buy on the site, uh, you know, what, what was the sort of transaction, all the stuff. Uh, so it gives you much, much richer data on you know, the, the uh, average uh, basket size and all this stuff because without that, you don't have you know, the financial data from, uh, from your website. To answer your question from earlier, uh, the goal would be that like 80, 90 percent of the startups that are here fall into one of these four baskets. And so we're going to have the different KPIs that you can build your assumptions out of. Of course, there's, oh, uh, there's going to be ones like you mentioned, like uh, SaaS or so it's SaaS, and you're going to have uh, VARs, right? Value-added resellers or something, right? Okay. So obviously, you would then put an addition on that. See, or you'd probably build a metrics around your acquisition, right? So your customer acquisition, your custom lifetime value, you would have a matrix, and you'd have your most desired, and then your your VAR would probably be someone right in the middle, right? Based on what you're seeing. Before we move on, actually, since this is you know moving quickly, any uh, right now thoughts, someone an idea, something an experience, someone wants to contribute something or ask something, so uh, we just uh, anyone? No? Okay, we can move on then. But please uh, feel free to. <laughs> um, so so you you start setting up you know analytics and the dashboards and all the stuff, but learning more about you know what what the client is doing on the site, especially in the early stages, is you know quite crucial. Um, in the early stages, if you're not, uh, you know, uh, scaling very quickly and all this stuff, you're trying to understand what, what is the core use uh, that, you know, uh, how is the visitor uh, using the site and what are they finding, you know, most value in. And, you know, event tracking uh, is, is super useful in this way. You can click a, a bunch of things now. Uh, <laughs> just keep clicking. Uh, Yep. Um, so, so one of the super useful things that uh, we've used multiple times in the past is the site search, right? And you can click, you know, uh, you can link your uh, site search to analytics, and you can see what customers are looking for on the site, even if you do not offer it, right? Because this this is a great one of the greatest hints about how to actually, you know, expand and add stuff. Uh, where are, what are people looking for, even if I don't find that this is actually a uh, a good data point. Then everything they do on their website, you know, if they uh, change the quantity, uh, if you're an e-commerce site, or if, you know, on a drop-down they chose, you know, November, or they, everyone, you know, cho chooses, let's say, 
Saturday on Sunday on Lativity, uh, Lativity. <laughs> Um, everyone uses Sunday, uh, Saturday or Sunday, you know that you know, most of the uh, traffic is coming to look for weekend stuff, right? So there's tons of data that you can, you can extract if uh, you know, people um, uh, are doing more weekends, then you have you know, a weekend section of the site. You make, make stuff easier for them to find uh, and you, know, uh, you make a landing page for we, uh, weekends. And all these actions can carry across to a mobile app, they can carry across to your social channels. You can use uh, and build out specific uh, shortened links that deploy a pixel for any of your social channels as well. So this, this isn't just confined to your own property. It's mm -hmm. kind of like your entire presence on the web. And j just a uh, you know, quick uh, note on the other stuff here um, is you know, uh, some stuff helps you operationally. right? You know, for here they have an example of you know, if you click on enlarge image, uh, you can track that. And this, is, this, this helps you, you know, if, if uh, if you're a, a site and you know, let's say you have um, um, images for the products that you're selling, uh, right? If no one is clicking on a large image, you do not need to upload high-res uh, versions of uh, your images. That's you know less uh, less trouble uh, for you. Uh, the site loads faster, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? So so a lot of stuff helps you operationally, and you know there's tons of data that customers every day they interact on your website are giving you. To uh, make those to operational to, decisions, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're blessing this quite <laughs> uh, So, so <laughs> this is a super important uh, portion. Uh, a lot of times we see founders saying, okay, I have my website up. Now, you know, how much money do I need to uh, spend on marketing? To actually, can you yeah, actually not? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because um, uh, people start reading and like this. Fair <laughs> Um, so, um, I'll, or I'll do it. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, very important to identify what exactly your website is trying to do, and make sure that it's doing it well before you spend anything on marketing. Uh, right? I mean, if, if your website is not converting at a good convert conversion rate, then any money that you spend on marketing is a waste, a waste, uh, waste of money. There's no budget. Uh, right? It doesn't matter. Even if you have, you know, uh, a huge uh, VC round, or if you, you're spending it from your pocket, all of it is waste. Uh, so, increasing the conversion rate, you know, the number of uh, customers that are finishing the whole process and you know doing something useful. And this is not always, you know, just a transaction and you know, shipping something, right? It's not all e-commerce, but it's something that you want the customer to actually uh, achieve on the website. The tracking just visits, you know, even if I'm uh, activity, is just wrong, right? Uh, you're trying to get someone to find the event that they like, right? So uh, you want to uh, get a sense of what the measure is. Sorry, I'm picking on you because I don't see a lot of attire uh, off. I see uh, instantly. Um, serve me. Uh, cool. You're next. Um, so, so if I'm an activity, I'm trying to get someone to find you know, a uh, event, a uh, workshop, and all this stuff. What's cool about you guys is you know, this ability to add to calendar and all this, uh, right? And I would track that uh, like crazy. You know, if, if you have that feature, how many people are adding to calendar from, and how can I help people add it to calendar more often, or even save it in their you know, activity favorites and all this stuff. So is, is anyone in here, when you do user testing, going outside of your actual employee base? Hands? Nobody? One person? Two? Yeah? So I mean, I think uh, obviously the goal would be that when you're going through building out a conversion funnel, you're, you're using not only your employees or friends or family. I, I actually really encourage you to use people where you pay them or you have people do surveys against it. Just put it out to random people as long as you know some geo demo information, uh, where they live, who they are, a little bit of information about them, and see wh how they experience the site, what they like about it, what they don't like about it, follow their engagement path, see if it's something that they would share with their friends. Just do a couple casual surveys. It's not, not expensive. You can get results in minutes. And it's a very easy way to test uh, without having to actually go live. You can do this on dummy pages. You can do it without using your logo. There's a lot of different ways to do it, and I really encourage you to independently, independently test. Totally agree. Um, and this is you know, a, a genetic warning. Uh, it's obvious, but it's also uh, quite, co quite common that we see founders saying, oh, you know, I have uh, the website up, and I'm you know, optimizing the website for conversion. Well, <laughs> don't even optimize for conversion if you know, the, the product itself is not super attractive. Uh, you know. Um, the goal of the whole company is to make the product itself very, very attractive, and then optimize the website for people to. Uh, so, so do I have 
enough inventory of events, right? This is number one, way before I help uh, people find them, right? So, so um, the product is number one, uh, enough said, I guess, on that. Um, yeah, I, this, this is, by the way, was the Motorola phone that had iTunes in it. And I'm not sure what five people in the world, I guess, uh, <laughs> used it. But you know, iTunes was, I think, a joke at that uh, time. So, uh, mobile iTunes was a joke at that time because you know, it just didn't work at that stage. Although Steve Jobs did do an amazing presentation <laughs> and Apple pushed it, it still sucked. Uh, Probably looked great on paper. There's a PowerPoint somewhere where a lot of people like were giving you the thumbs up. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, and Motorola, by the way, spent tons of money you know, marketing this thing. And you know, the whole thing was a flop. And not until the mobile iTunes experience got really good that people, you know, start picking it up. And exactly. this, you know, uh, just uh, a, a quick warning, so we're not, um, uh, we, we don't forget the most important stuff. Uh, usually I actually click, I, there's a really f uh, fun video that uh, we do, which is, uh, you know, the real life checkout. Um, this is a quick section on um, conversion optimization. Um, can we get, like, one interaction? Can, can someone, like, you know, if this is, you know, interesting, if this is making someone think, if this is not interesting, either way, like, let, let's get someone uh, asking questions, yeah? Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, Elias was uh, here uh, yeah. earlier in the day. Uh, Elias actually announced his, uh, let's see, he's leaving PayPal. Um, so, so um, PayPal doesn't have an official uh, one in Lebanon. Uh, the, it's, it's a bunch of regulators. Uh, the announcement was actually not an announcement. It was a misquote by uh, journalists in Lebanon. They did not announce launching in Lebanon. No, no immediate plans in 2013. Maybe 2014. I hope so. No plans in 2000. Uh, Sorry? Yeah. Yeah, so the question is on, you know, payments processing and all this stuff. I think there's a bunch of people using uh, payments here. Uh, Cedric, are you guys accepting payments? Not yet. Who's accepting, you know, online payments? Uh, uh, Lebanese-based company accepting online payments. Yeah, and what, what's, what's your, honestly, I'm not an expert on Lebanese payments uh, gateways. Settle offshore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do not use Lebanese payment platforms. Yeah, settle yeah. offshore. Okay. Cool. So, so the answer was, you know, a recommendation at the early stage is uh, open a uh, bank account in the U.S., find someone that, uh, you know, can open one for you and accept PayPal to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, sorry. Yeah, great. Yes, let's go first. Yeah. Scroll. Yeah. And sorry, you, you had something as well? Oh, yeah. Okay, let us just close with the question on payments. Um, I think if, if you install PayPal, you can also accept credit cards as well, but it's with the PayPal... Uh, yeah, PayPal processing, yeah. So, uh, and, and there's krill.com that is recommended. Uh, Gate to Play Gate to as pay. well, yeah. Yep. Gate cool. to Play, a Jordan-based uh, company. Mm -hmm. yeah. cool. cool, excellent. So, yeah, yeah, there was a question actually besides the... Ah. Yeah. Bitcoin? I have no idea. Yeah. No, I honestly don't know anything. Do you know anything about Twitter? Mm -mm. I, I, would, I would be careful about Bitcoin right now. They're getting, you know, legislated in the U.S. big time, big time. Uh, so I'd be, I would be careful. Uh, which one? The uh, tariff. Oh, yeah, cool. Oh, no, nice meeting you. <laughs> yeah.
No, of course. It, 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 I, think, I think that's also really applicable to e-commerce. I think that's it's been doing like a performance marketing or, or really expensive ad spend. I think if you have a product, you can probably, you know, a minimum viable product. Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. But, but I mean, it's, it's just about prioritization, right? Uh, will I go and like blast tens of thousands on, you know, a totally uh, shitty one? No. Uh, totally shitty product? No. But do I want to say, okay, this is my MVP, and I want a thousand users to see it and interact with it to learn something from them? Of course. Sorry if there was a misunderstanding. But it's not like, okay, you know, I have something, now I can focus all my energy on phase two, which is, you know, marketing it, right? It's, of course, you know, a process, uh, yeah. Thanks. Cool. cool. That was actually a good interaction. Um, yeah, so song conversion. Th this, um, this one takes, you know, the e-commerce example. Uh, and, you know, uh, we had here, <laughs> wow. Uh, we had back here all the metrics that uh, we generally use in all the different uh, industries. This takes, you know, the perspective of an e-commerce company and how you actually, um, it applies to a few, like, you know, similar business models, but um, a customer, uh, you know, arrives on your site, um, the, the, you know, the first things to think about when you're trying to optimize conversion is does my site load fast enough, right? Are my all my images, you know, incredibly compressed? Um, does everything on, important? How does it look on mobile? Sorry. How does it look on mobile? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, uh, super important, you know. Does it look well on tablets and you know mobile phones and all the stuff? If this is you know a core part of uh, your product, uh, are all the things that are important, you know, loading up? If it's let's say on desktop, I have a very desktop mentality, but uh, <laughs> exactly this, this is shifting away. Yeah. Um, is everything you know above the fold? Because if, if, if your stuff that is important, you know, you're scrolling down to uh, make it up to see uh, for the customers to see it. This is you know a total waste, and you're you're losing a lot of uh, potential customers, right? Um, and then, well, um, the layout the visibility and all the stuff of the action items, right? So if I get, and it's like, you know, too cluttered, there's too many things, there's too many options, there's too many drop downs, there's too many things. I, I do not know where to proceed. So a lot of people, you know, bounce out. And this goes back to, you know, the point that Will was making on get people that are not within the company to test uh, the product. Because everyone in the company, you know, I can go on, you know, the websites and navigate uh, my website, you know, uh, blindfolded. Yeah but get people that have never seen it to try to see it and you say, oh, this is actually more complex than actually I think because I'm used to it too much, right? So, so you always, uh, and, and when you're optimizing for conversion, always think this is a person that clicked on an ad that I put somewhere, let's say Facebook, Facebook ad just came, never heard of my company, never heard of me, never heard from them, not friend, friend, just totally random person came and I need to sell them in that you know, space on the phone, on the tablet, or, you know, in the... Desktop. Above, uh, above... Above uh, the fold. Yeah, above the fold on desktop. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, th uh, think about it, and uh, the, the, selling, the selling should should happen there, right? So, they, they got there, you got them interested, they're, you know, okay, they understand now that they're able to see events, um, you know, in Lebanon, uh, let's say, uh, events that are um, fun events, but also other stuff, you know, uh, personal development, all stuff, they're sold. They're starting to navigate, and at, at this stage, you know, it's um, other, other factors, right? If I click on, um, let's say, uh, fun events, it, am I get, getting, you know, one result or like, you know, 50 results, right? And the availability of, you know, those, uh, those uh, that inventory, let's say, um, that uh, will, will uh, determine, you know, how, how they perceive the site at stage number two, right? So, so um, do I make subcategories that are too specific where, you know, uh, it's, um, it's specific, so specific that I'm, I don't have enough stuff to show people? That's just, you know, a question because, you know, it might be a bad experience navigating all the way through to, you know, if something super specific, let's say whatever, someone I want to meet in uh, a, a tiny city, uh, right, a tiny village. It's only one person, right? <laughs> so that's actually not a great experience. That uh, the platform should actually, you know, pull you back to say, okay, the 50 is the minimum people that uh, you, you filter down to, or you know, 10 events is the minimum number of events. I don't know, right? I so, good. Yeah. I was just saying, I think this is also the layer of the funnel where you can ask them to raise their hand and say, yes, I'm interested in this specifically, or 
if it's a if it's a product or if it's a specific type of category, sign up for an email or sign up uh, maybe Facebook Connect or download the mobile app and and say and I specifically like this type of con uh, content or events because uh, this is the part of the funnel where you really want to start qualifying people and it's not just going to be through their kind of blind actions. You want them to actually raise their hand and like opt in at this point. Yep. Um, and basically, you got them interested in all the stuff, and at this stage, you know, you just want to make them achieve the goal that you wanted them to achieve. Yes, sir. Yep. Super interesting. I, I'll give a perspective, sure. uh, just a quick one. It honestly depends on your business model. Yeah. Uh, if I'm a uh, fab, uh, you know fab.com? Fab.com uh, is the designer items, all the stuff you find, you, know, you go and you find you know, a cup that is whatever, uh, a cup that is, you know, looks like a lens, right? Uh, it's a pillow that looks like a ninja. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you go and find the you know, random cool stuff. One day you arrive and it's really cool stuff and you buy. Other days you arrive and there's nothing, right? So for Fab, I would say grab the email as soon as possible because it's a long selling cycle, right? You might want to contact them you know, uh, every week, every day with emails and all the stuff. So you're able to get them back to sell them, right? You know that not everyone that comes every day will have something to buy, right? But if I'm, you know, um, if, uh, if I'm like Amazon, right? I don't need, uh, Amazon has millions of products. I don't need to force people at the beginning and get them to drop off. I, I lose people dropping off and piecing out. Th that's the problem, right? Once you ask someone to do something, that whole thing, they're like, okay, click, close, you know, back to Facebook, right? Um, so um, if I'm Amazon, I'll grab it at time of checkout and say, okay, you know, let me get them through, get them to check out. And at checkout, they enter the email and they grab it, and then I get them, uh, you know, multiple times in the future because I was able to provide the service, right? So I think it depends on how t minimum, yeah. So here's an idea, especially in this region, and especially for your business where you want to get the cell phone anyway. I would try an SMS authorization. Um, I'd give it a shot, a short code SMS authorization, and in the SMS, it's actually going to have the email. Um, I think it would really work, and I think that's another touch point that's going to increase the value in, uh, of each one of your customers uh, for your platform. It's a it's a dating uh, yeah, matchmaking yeah, sure. site, so having yeah, a phone number would be pretty important. So I would push for a phone number that way, because you're normally sitting there, you want to keep that one browser open. Think about the user experience. You have a phone here. Okay, six seven two three eight nine. Great. Next move. Done. I think it would be a, just a killer feature, uh, and especially in some of the markets uh, that you were talking about, Saudi and things like that, uh, it's really difficult. They're not going to go to their email box and then sort through email. They don't check email in Saudi, I'm pretty sure. I think it's illegal. So they just, <laughs> it's, it's what they have WhatsApp. Twitter, WhatsApp. And Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, WhatsApp and, and, and maybe Instagram yeah. Yeah, when they're trying to talk to people in Bahrain. Yeah. yeah. Like they did, uh, so to be able to segment them, you mean in terms of okay, this person wants. Mm -hmm. Well, this ties back to I mean, so the first thing you need to do is figure out what the incentive is to get more information, other than asking for more from Facebook Connect asking for interest. I think what you need to do is get them to say, I'm interested in events around food or in the marina or in this location and Jamezi or whatever, right? So you want to qualify them more. But I think on the other side of that, you can do some um, demographic targeting that could be interesting as well. So if you sent an email newsletter once a month and you had a really nice call to action in there, a really nice discount, so you save it, you do one, one a month, but when they open that email, you fire a pixel, and then you can retarget them 
uh, only on a cost per click basis, then it's a really easy way to, to stop annoying them. You're only doing a monthly newsletter unless you have a specific event that they've signed up for. So I think it's using some of the other retargeting capabilities that are out there that are very efficient and also trying to find the right incentive. Uh, and that could be through brand partnerships like we talked about um, to be able to, to create the incentive uh, to get them to give you opt-in with more information. I think in this specific case, Eventbrite actually does a great job. Um, I've, I've signed up on Eventbrite on a, f uh, on a few things like Rwanda the Mixed Mentor in Dubai and then like a Campus London thing. And now everything I get from Eventbrite is, uh, you know, entrepreneurship stuff, right? And it was just, you know, from two data points that they got, um, which is, uh, you know, cool in some ways. Uh, but I think, you know, if, if uh, just like Will was saying, if you're able to, uh, fr from the from the action that they did on site, uh, do, uh, yeah, retargeting is, is super, super efficient. But also, you know, email. I mean, what, what would I guess let's take some somebody's. Uh, what would someone be willing to share with Laptivity to get you know a better uh, email? Because this is basically what you're looking for data, right? I want more information from you, and to get you to send you a uh, better. Okay, email. say Laptivity does one major awesome event a month, and in order to go to that event, it's open to to users. It's a user community play you probably talked about already. But in order to go to that, they have to opt in and check a couple more boxes in order to be able to go. Just raise their hand what areas they like to go out, the types of events, and the types of things that they normally plan with their friends, or the types of events they organize. Because you want to be able to get them to also not just find events, but you want them to publish events. So those three things, if they do that and their information is current, once a month they get an invite to, uh, or they get, they get uh, access to an invite only. It's, just, it's a bad example, but you know, something like that, finding the incentive to get them to raise their hand yes. and say, I'm interested. LinkedIn does a beautiful, beautiful job in this, in terms of, you know, they show you like an empty uh, disk on the right, <laughs> and like, you know, you have not filled the disk, you know, and this gamification, yeah, so this gamification, like I, I wanted to, for that thing to be full, I'm like at 95, I've done everything and still not full. Uh, I've gotten recommendations, I've given recommendations. <laughs> and you know, this is the only thing that you know, can incentivize me to do. Your social <laughs> life is incomplete <laughs> without that. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, now with this new thing, I, uh, I, I don't do it. Please. Facebook, I don't trust as much, that's the thing. <laughs> so you have to like strike this like, you know, trust thing. I Facebook, I want to give them more data. Um, now, because of this, you know, focus on you know, the big challenges being uh, marketing, uh, of course, we're going to touch on it. Um, a lot of the questions are, you know, where do I spend my budget? What channels do I use? Um, and all this stuff. So, so one of the ways to think about it is, okay, um, when you're trying to put any dollar in marketing, that is, you know, a few questions you should ask. You know, can you measure it super quickly, right? So. I've been actually quite surprised. I landed uh, two nights ago at the airport, and I got, get out, and a fantastic bank, Bank Audi, has a huge billboard for like emo, which I think you know raises awareness. But you know the potential customers of emo are online, so why just blast money on billboards, right? I mean, unless you know they can get infinitely cheaper than the market rate. Market rates in the Middle East are actually quite expensive for outdoor advertising because you know the marketing landscape is not mature enough to measure to focus on uh, conversion uh, so so you have all these branded advertisers bidding the price up and it doesn't make sense for anyone that is focused on you know performance marketing to do offline marketing right so so why why uh, why do that i have no idea so so how how to prevent uh, that how quickly can you measure it you cannot uh, you know you can measure uh, stuff like you know Google Ads, Facebook, or even your re referral that is, you know, uh, a viral elements of, uh, of your site, you know, share it with your friends and all the stuff, much, much quicker than uh, offline. Is it cost efficient, of course? Uh, super important question. Can I, uh, can, on a per channel basis, what's a great, you know, customer acquisition rate for me? And am I able to get that on that specific channel? Yeah. Uh, can I scale it, right? So, so I mean, SEO, for example, is a fantastic tool, uh, and I encourage everyone to, you know, if, if you have a uh, website or, you know, um, uh, I guess a mobile app uh, that you're, you know, getting downloads from a website, to use like a serious SEO effort. It's, it's just getting more and more harder and harder to differentiate yourself in SEO, maybe less so in the Middle East, 
but um, you cannot scale it uh, very quickly, right? So, so you're doing SEO, let's say, to, uh, on dating, uh, and then you get an inje injection of funds, and you know your business five. plan goes like this. Five minutes. Ah, oh, five minutes. Wow. Okay, sure. Cool. Um, so, um, can you actually, you know, double or triple your? Uh, you cannot, right? So, so it's a great channel to have and to grow, but it's impossible to, you know, scale very quickly. So, I'd, you know, ma make sure I do it. But I also need to find other channels that also ca I can use uh, to be able to scale quicker, right? Um, can you target custom? Yes, sorry, it's a big. Yeah. 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 Listen, it, it sounds uh, it sounds quite um, stupid to say in the West, but here actually display advertising, uh, very smart display, not like blasting homepage takeover. Retargeting crap. and uh, yeah, yeah. So re retargeting is one of them, but even you know doing uh, doing actual you know very targeted display with you know um, you target very specific. Uh, uh, you know, Based on items they left in their shopping cart, for instance. Sorry? Based on I items they may have left in their shopping cart. Well, this is more like retargeting, but actually display someone that has never been on your site before. Uh, actually, in the mix here, it's, it's, uh, it's quite efficient to be able to acquire. And honestly, all marketing channels depend on a couple of questions. You know, how fast do you want to grow? And do you have the money basically to uh, use them, right? So, so a great... Uh, I'm a huge, huge fan of um, Google Ads, right? It's, it's fantastic because if you want very, something very specific, you know, let's say uh, wine events in June, <laughs> if I uh, do that, I go to like a specific activity and you know, let it deconverse me, right? If you're making money out of them, don't don't uh, don't spend money if you're not making money from people yet. Um, so uh, very specific. Dropbox people, right? They experimented with uh, Google Ads. It's a, you know, they put their uh, learning on a uh, slide chart. It's super interesting. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, and um, they experimented. It was $233 customer acquisition on Google Ads, right? So terrible uh, because they, it's uh, super hard for them to uh, recoup that back. Why? Because it's, you know, a much more complex thing to search for uh, because no one is searching shared storage that is better than existing shared storage and simpler, right? It is a much, uh, much uh, different concept. So all that to say is it depends um, on, you know, all channels depend on what you're trying to achieve, what your business is and all the stuff. Display has worked quite well. We've done tons of, uh, in the past, partnerships. You know, uh, companies in the region, I, maybe it comes to thousands of years of, you know, being traders and uh, barterers. But even big companies in the UAE, huge banks, we would go and say, okay, you know, 10% 10, 10 discount for your customers, just blast everyone yeah. on your list, right? And they said yes. Yeah. Co-op marketing. Sorry? Co-op, cooperative marketing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, I mean, uh, like actually, the, you know, these, these type of things, they did never lead to like immediate conversions, but we saw that, you know, people eventually, you know, came back and uh, converted. So, some of them are not worth, you know, too much ha haggling and all stuff, but uh, in some cases you can get, uh, so if I say, SEO, uh, referral, uh, one thing that was fantastic is actually referral for, you know, even e-commerce sites, right? So, so people think, you know, not super referral driven. In every box that we shipped, we put a uh, discount code and we said send it to your friends. And uh, people would send it to their friends. But because it arrived in the box, at that moment, this is basically a moment of experience with the site, right? Because if we had to told them on the site, do it, they would not do it. But at that moment of receiving the box, right, they've uh, experienced the good service, yeah. they've experienced good product, they will go on Twitter and all the stuff and say, okay, I've experienced that, go 10% uh, discount. So you have to also know what moment, you know, uh, if you're doing referrals, what moment to target uh, in, in the experience funnel. Sorry, long answer. Uh, <laughs> sure. Um, so yeah, basically a big diet right about uh, offline being terrible. Uh, <laughs> not gonna read it. Uh, don't do offline. Uh, don't waste time. I mean, uh, sometimes it's cheap, uh, but even wasting a day to go do, you know, a uh, TV uh, or whatever. Uh, maybe TV is the exception. If it's a free TV, uh, you know, interview, and there's, you know, your target segment watching. Uh, it's different phases too. Uh, TV could make sense if you've already reached critical mass with your audience. 
in a specific market and you know of you said a very efficient way to do it but mm -hmm. in general you're always going to over deliver it, out of home you're going to over deliver radio can be very effective for a call to action but you're really going to over deliver there as well yeah uh, offline is usually you know for for online companies it's just uh, you know if, if you just Per, you know, just put a whiteboard and say, okay, these many people are going to listen, these are what people are going to actually, you know, actually get the message, and these many people are actually going to go to the site, and then multiply by your normal conversion rate, right, or even 10% more, it's, it's crap, uh, so don't spend money at all on it, time, question mark, on actually spending time going to do interviews and all this stuff, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big, anything that helps your ego is usually like a waste of time in a startup. Uh, we should take maybe one more question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as many questions as uh, this is uh, just uh, too geeky. Yeah. Cool. Uh, five minutes for the whole thing, or five minutes for what? I think they wanted us to wrap up. Uh, Sorry. Hi, uh, Kuni. Yeah. Sure. There was a really interesting portion that uh, Will prepared for, uh, right. uh, you know, tools, uh, SaaS tools, and all the stuff, whatever. Well, we can share them. Uh, we can share them. Uh, just give me a call. With you guys later. Happy yeah. to walk you guys yeah. through it. So, okay, Q&A. What, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, you cannot really, but uh, if you shoot us an email and have, you know, something specific uh, that we, we, you know, we can share. Yeah, no, nothing, honestly, nothing is very, it was more like, you know, visual aid to, like, help us just keep the conversation in flow. There's nothing really that important on, on here on, yeah. So what? Because it's intellectual property. Yeah. So next year, uh, Wanda will be launching Wanda U, and in collaboration with Astronauts and others in the region, we'll be doing uh, an hour videos on specific topics. Yeah, so, yeah, so that, w that will, will you know, be more focused to be you know, self-contained, make sense, because if this like, goes around, it's garbage almost. I'm not super uh, proud of it. And if it goes around, you know, it's, not, uh, it's, it's not ready for, for like, you know, broadcast. Yeah. Yeah, there's much better one being prepared for the one that you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, for offline, uh, offline marketing, you yeah. were saying it's not very effective if your clients are online. Yeah. But basically, what uh, I like to differ because if you have uh, content that is offline, you can use online. For example, if you use your interview with, uh, with a known uh, media outlet, for example, NBC or whatever, you can post this on YouTube and then you get recognition, you get the quality. What do you mean, uh, like billboards that you have on the street to market yourself online? Yeah, billboards on the street, you can take pictures of these or, I don't know, tailor them to the audience online. Yeah, so, so I guess we, we are like just on two different perspectives. Um, I think he's saying that, that offline doesn't scale. It's, it's an incredibly cumbersome thing for you to do. And it's too expensive. For you to buy media here in, in Saudi and in UAE. And also taking a picture of billboard is not one of the most efficient ways to do display advertising online. But, uh, but for press release, yeah, I, I, uh, from, for doing press, I think there's, a, there's an argument that can be made that it could help your online strategy and it, there's some validation in that. I think what, he, what Lewis was trying to, the point he was trying to make is it doesn't necessarily scale. And you don't want to, like, overly rely, and we see this every week where there's startups that overly rely on doing press and seeing their names in press and press. Yes, yeah, so, so if you're right. using them to basically get some legitimacy to get suppliers or to say, okay, you know, at the bottom, yeah. you know, my company in the news and then you, you check a couple of off and you're done. Yes, but it's not actually, you know, a customer acquisition channel. Uh, so, so yes, does give you legitimacy to you know, say, you know, I've been on, you know, Al Jazeera doing an hour program on uh, Yes, everyone is going to want to work with you, B2B, you know, on the background. And also, even customers might say, okay, you know, this, uh, this is more legit uh, than I thought it was. But it's not, you know, it's not one of the best ways to actually acquire customers. Yeah. Yeah. You mean doing TV ads and stuff? Yeah. Fab. Fab the TV. 
But all these did TV when they had like 10, 20, 30 million in revenue a month. I mean. Listen, I, I give you my, uh, my experience. We did actually a major TV campaign in the Gulf. Uh, so uh, all of this stuff is like, you know, we, we've done actually uh, print, we've done billboards, uh, we've done TV. Um, and in TV, we did uh, a week flight. Um, we tested it for the next four, four, uh, four weeks, right? Because you have 30 day cookie uh, lifetime. We saw, we saw what was happening with the batch that came from TV, um, uh, you know, improved efficiency by like 25-30% on the next one. We knew way better than the media buying unit how to target our audience than they did after the first uh, week. Even better after the second week. And then, still then, it was super hard to um, get to a acquisition, customer acquisition cost that was acceptable enough. I'll give you two, I guess, exceptions. And Rami, on the other hand, has you know, a partnership with NBC and they have 3 million downloads from NBC, right? So uh, they were able to strike that, and that's great for them, right? A, if you're able to strike an amazing partnership and get TV at super cheap rate, do it. Do it. Akhtabut in uh, the UAE yeah. in Dubai did a you know, partnership with the uh, TCOM, the uh, huge uh, uh, home. free zone. Uh, sorry? It was out of home, like billboards and. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so uh, TCOM is a huge uh, free, free zone, zone, media city, all the stuff. And they got, they gave them like a barter thing, and they got uh, billboards across Media City, Khabud.com, Khabud.com, all the stuff, right? So that was, a, you know, a barter thing. That was smart. That was a hack. I'm talking, you know, base, uh, you know, a hack is always great. If you're able to, uh, you know, hack the system, it's always good. Um, but if you're spending your own money or money you raised, we, yeah. you, right now what we're trying to focus on is scaling under, uh, underneath the umbrella of performance, and. When you said eHarmony, when you said eBay, eBay is publicly traded. eHarmony is one of the wealthiest privately held internet companies in the world. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're not really relevant examples for scaling under the, the yeah. umbrella of performance. And, and I think the one exception would be someone like Fab, and Fab wanted to increase their brand's perception in specific categories because they wanted to move into being a, privately, uh, like a private label uh, brand. They want to be the IKEA for online, and it, that that helped their pivot. Oh, two last caveats. Uh, and they raised 40 raised million. <laughs> well, uh, also Fab is you know cutting a uh, number of people and all this stuff. I think they waste yeah. too much time, uh, too much money on TV. But uh, two things. One, we have in the Middle East like big oligopolies of uh, offline, you know, NBC Group, Shreya, such stuff. Great people, but unfortunately high prices. <laughs> I don't be killed. Um, in Europe, you're able to buy actually something called remnant inventory. So, yeah. uh, you know, the day before, you call them and say, what's, what are slots tomorrow that they can buy today at like 80%, 90% discount? We tried to negotiate that for six months. No, no, uh, uh, you know, no TV uh, company would uh, uh, allow it for now because they think it's a threat. Uh, if, if they start allowing it for one company, everyone will start, uh, you know, wanting remnant inventory. If they have tons of uh, inventory they don't sell, they just start putting, you know, NBC2 uh, commercials and all this stuff. Uh, but they don't want to sell it for cheap because it uh, starts a vicious cycle. Uh. Sorry? Yeah. I mean, unless you're in the business of, uh, you'd have to be in something that's r like financial services or like government or something to want to, I think, to want to have a really private cloud. I think everything you can do as a software as a service or as a consumer platform, you can scale and no one's going to look down on you for it or, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. I mean, when you're seeing w uh, video streaming companies are outsourcing their, their, <laughs> uh, their, their filler and their, um, you know, the buffering and everything to other companies. So you have Akamai doing the buffering, you have EC2 doing, I mean, uh, you, you know you're at a point where the uh, platform and infrastructure as a service has reached, uh, you know, real scale. And because of that, you want to take advantage of that, right? You want to take advantage of that commoditization. Um, so yeah, I would, I, I would have no problem with that. One last question. One last question. Because it's just five and Habib is uh, giving the evil eye. Yeah? <laughs> 
Any any uh, any last uh, interesting questions?